the big story for a lot of you out there, I know. <laughs> According to Dave Meltzer, several top stars in AEW stated that they are not willing to work with CM Punk. In the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and yes, folks, this is up uh, on the WrestlingObserver.com main page, not the entire newsletter itself, freeloaders. No, you're actually going to have to come up off a little bit of money and pay for that. And boy, do you get your money's worth uh, in times like this. But for the rest of you uh, out there who, who are subscribers, you can check it out in full. But if not, there's a story up on the main page, which takes uh, some of the uh, points that Dave wrote about, and I'll go through some of them now here. But in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Meltzer reported the feeling backstage is that Punk will not be back with the company. Quote, a few names were mentioned, with Chris Jericho being the name mentioned most, but that many, if not most, of the key top names were saying that they would not work with him, meaning CM Punk. That's what Meltzer wrote. This is what he wrote in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Quote, a to another top star in AEW said, Punk won't be back. His value on screen isn't 1% worth the hassle and black cloud that he causes backstage. Fightful Select reported that Jericho confronted Punk backstage at All Out following the media scrum and altercation with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, reportedly telling Punk... Quote, he, he is a cancer to the locker room and a detriment to the company. And one addition from Fightful, I'll throw in here. Uh, in one of their reports, they also stated that those we've spoken to didn't recount CM Punk's reply verbatim, but he, that he ex effectively told Jericho it wasn't his business and needed to leave. So... No doubt that Chris Jericho came up to him. Apparently CM Punk just basically told him, no, this is not any of your business. And uh, that was that. Meltzer, good. this story goes on to say, Meltzer reported recently that AEW is in negotiations with Punk over a buyout of his contract, with a holdup being the length of a non-compete clause. I got to be honest, I don't know why. Um, I guess he could certainly show back up in WWE and drop a big pipe bomb about AEW, but I, I don't know if that means as much anymore. I guess it could, and I guess if you're really a hardcore WWE person, it could, but like, eh, I don't know about that. And uh, it would be just very interesting for a guy who went through what he went through with them not because his problems didn't just disappear when Vince McMahon retired. You know, he had a lot of straight head to head issues with Paul Levesque. You remember that whole deal about, you know, I don't have to work with you. You have to work with me. I can't see him ever going back there. So I this is probably a legal hang up over the non-compete. But if you want a fantasy book and put him there, that's great. If he wants to go back, uh, you know, hey, what can I say about it? It's his life and it's his money. But, boy, he will be eating one healthy pile of crow if he decides to go back and drop one another pipe bomb promo on Tony Khan and WWE or something like that. But, yeah, a few names were mentioned, uh, with Chris Jericho being the name <laughs> that most – that most of the key top names said would not work with him whatsoever. And that's not really a surprise either. Chris Jericho has uh, been very vocal about what he thinks about CM Punk. He's also very vocal about how he feels uh, about his place in that company. And on Wednesday, Wrestling Inc.'s Nick Hausman reported that those from Punk's camp said that Punk's dog Larry was injured during the backstage altercation Larry was said to have been, have been hit in the face by the locker room door when it was, quote, kicked in by the Young Bucks. At a veterinarian appointment a few days later, Larry had to have two teeth removed. However, the story is being denied by those from the elite's camp. You don't say. <laughs> this is what Dave wrote in, in full in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. A completely made-up story, said one person regarding it, He's losing in the results, in the investigation results, and he is desperate. There, were, there's a, there was a multiple weeks-long investigation, and this was oddly not discovered. Hmm. That was actually written in there like that. Also, it so happened to be mentioned the moment that there was news about the Bucks and Omega possibly coming back. It's insane that people would even humor this. The dog story is a complete lie, said a neutral party who was in the locker room seconds after the incident occurred. When the altercation hap was happening, Punk was a total psycho. And then a story that 
had a little bit of traction for a few days because everybody took it and ran with their own version of fanfic, but it closes like this. Kenny Omega picked up the dog to save him from being hurt and gave him to Mega. Mega was holding the dog, screaming at Punk to stop. Punk didn't even register that his baby was being held by a stranger in the middle of a fight. It didn't stop him one bit. So there is your full and complete update on CM Punk, The Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Mega, Tony Khan, uh, Ace Steel, his wife, who apparently was not talked to as part of the investigation, and the now toothless dog, Larry. I don't mean to make light of any of this stuff, because for the people involved, it is very serious. So I'm definitely not going to do that. But at this point, if you are just a wrestling fan, like, just... <laughs> God, I cannot wait till the story is over. And, you know, maybe everybody can have a book deal way, way, way later on down the line and give their opinion on everything that has been taking place here. I'll say this. And who the hell am I, right? At no point when all of this was going on, and I heard a lot from both sides of this, never not once did I hear about Larry the dog's teeth being knocked out by swinging door that was kicked in by the young bucks and as dave and brian have talked about many times and if other people have also talked about the door was not kicked in you could not kick that door in but who knows maybe it's true about larry the dog you know i'm sure that there is truth on both sides here it's just you know a landmine of of nonsense you're trying to walk through to actually get what the facts are going to be in this case and who the hell knows if they'll ever actually come out in full and in detail and uh in completion because i have a feeling everybody is still holding a little bit of their side on this back Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Actually, actually yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Or put him black and white, Jared. Make <laughs> so- him look as gold and gray as pot. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. <laughs> this is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now yeah. we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? <laughs> yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. <laughs> well, we'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin Man. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.